Thank you. I, I am just absolutely amazed at how many people are coming at the same thing from different angles, arriving at the same conclusions, and just it's like laying out a scaffolding. And now people are starting to hang things on the scaffolding. And when these pieces all start to integrate, and the inputs of one become the uh, the outputs of one become the inputs of another, you will see uh, a new economy forming in, in a formal way. And what we do. Um, what I'm going to talk about is very similar to what others are saying, but from a different angle. And this is all sort of tweet friendly. It's an experiment that I'm doing. Um, but th the statement is all, mon all, all, monetary all money is valuable, but not all value is monetary. And that's the statement that we just closed on. So we must expand our awareness of what value is far beyond what can be articulated by money. And that's where we're going to see this true economy that, that we're, it's all that's boiling around us. This true economy, it does exist. All that value that's disappeared, as Greg says, it does exist. $40 trillion of it is out there. It's invisible. Now, how do we make this value visible? Okay? So this is a, 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 a tag cloud I picked up on the Internet. And it's really interesting because um, we call these intangibles. But in fact, they are extremely tangible. And my demonstration of that is try running a business without one of those. Okay, and sometimes the value of these things exceed the value of the business itself. So how can we say that these are intangible? They're just simply invisible. Okay, so how do you make them visible? Well, a company like Boeing has an inventory of every nut, bolt, and panel and rivet that goes on an aircraft, and they nurture that inventory with intensity. Every bank has an accounting system. They count every single penny. They're supposed to know where everything is. But we don't have a knowledge inventory. This is a stunning omission, absolutely stunning omission. We don't know what we know. And that subject has come up many times in this conference. We don't know what we know. Now, this knowledge inventory we could talk about later, not enough time now, but it needs to form that knowledge in the form of a financial instrument. That means it has to have a quality and a quantity associated with it because that's how an asset is defined. Okay, so when we build a knowledge inventory, each knowledge element needs to have a quality and quantity associated. If it's an asset, people will trade it. Okay, so one thing that's really interesting is that, um, well, let me make one, one other point here. We, uh, there's an algorithm out there for how to create value, how to introduce value. And it's really very common. We all know it. Bankers, for example, are not concerned with money. They're concerned with the rate of change of money with respect to time. Stockholders are not concerned with interest rates. We call that interest rates. Stockholders aren't concerned with interest rates. They're concerned with the rate of change of the rate of change with respect to time. We call that growth. Hedge fund managers are concerned with the rate of change of the rate of change of the rate of change. And in calculus, we call that a derivative. In finance, that's called a derivative too. Something whose value is determined by the value of something else. So that, that algorithm is very clear. It exists. We use it all day. It's intuitive. We also know that data, information, knowledge, innovation, and wisdom are related. We know that we can also say that information is related to the rate of change of data with respect to time. We saw the quants talking about that yesterday. We know that knowledge is related to the rate of change of information with respect to time. We know that innovation is related to the rate of change of knowledge with respect and so forth. So that's a derivative too. And we can see that in the data. In fact, we can influence the data to produce that. That's how value can become produced. Now, to build an instrument out of that is not as far-fetched as many may seem, may, may feel. I call it an alternate economy because it's not a new economy so much, it's alternate. It hedges the one we have now because we're trying to reintroduce that $40 trillion of value to the existing economy to make it work again. Because we don't have a money problem, we have a value problem. The value that people create is not being articulated with money. So the alternate economy is, uh, is, is created, is a, a currency is created from innovation, okay? Innovation is a promise based on future productivity. When I innovate something, I'm going to make a promise there will be increased productivity in the future. Well, money is backed by debt, and debt is also a promise to produce something in the future. Okay, so you have two currencies backed by the same thing 
they're fully convertible all day long. So the idea is to build a currency backed by these rates of change of, of, um, of the parameters that I, of the knowledge inventory. So innovation is defined as a new idea that creates value. That's the most generic form. You can call it economic value. You can call it anything. But when we increase the definition of value, in this definition, we can increase the definition of innovation. Okay, so we look, go back and look at this cloud. When you're creating community, you're introducing ideas which have a value. When you're, when you're building resilience in a community, this is a new idea that adds value, that creates value. So all these things now fall in the domain of innovation. Okay, and it's not a stretch to, to monetize this, or not to monetize this, but to turn this into something tradable. I'm gonna, oh, I'm, I'm done. Okay, so <laughs> this means that currency backed by debt and currency backed by innovation are both backed by future, future productivity, fully convertible, seamlessly. In fact, they hedge each other and you can think of your favorite dictator. What did they run out of? Guns, money? No, they ran out of social currency. So it's a hedge. It's a very real hedge that we're going to need. So um, it can be done fairly soon, by the way. It's not something that's years off. If we put our heads together, the people here, we can build one of these things very quickly. So the world is looking for a hedge on money. And if you're wondering where the safest place to put your money is, then you need to be considering um, this, the new value movement is what, what's emerging before us. Thank you.